hello and welcome to our video. Uh, I'm Jenny. I'm the chief editor of Snack Food and Wholesale Bakery, and I'm here with David Beck, a marketing director for Kellogg Salty Snacking Portfolio. David, welcome. Hi, Jenny. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk with you today. Um, yeah, well, you've got some really cool stuff going on at Kellogg with, um, you know, I'm I'm a fan of the cereal, but I'm also a fan of your salty snacks. And that is your gig. So I'm a little jealous of the fun you must be having. Um, it's an interesting time to be in the snack business. I was wondering before we get into the cool stuff that Kellogg is doing, uh, could you talk about some of the notable consumer trends that we've seen emerge in recent years? Absolutely, Jenny. Um, there, there, there's a few that I'd like, I'd like to kind of call attention to. Um, so consumers, um, they've been creating snacking moments across the entire day. Uh, Kellogg's has, has been creating opportunities to delight consumers with both classic and inventive snacks to, to really connect with them across those, those, those snacking moments that are happening so often during the day. Um, what you see come to life with, with changing schedules and, and folks still working from home or school starting, just routines are constantly up in the air. Um, it's really led to just a huge uptick over the past several years in snacking. Um, many consumers, if you didn't know, um, they're now enjoying more than five snacks like every day. Um, you're seeing uh, for the third year in a row, um, almost two thirds of consumers prefer snacking as a, a meal replacement. And so just ditching lunch altogether and just snacking throughout the day. Um, in addition to that, even though there's more occasions, consumers are, are eating more items per snacking occasion. Um, and, and part of that is we know that half of consumers are simply just looking for like an energy boost to kind of get through their day when they eat a snack. Um, I'd love to talk about the, the role of, of salty snacks for consumers and how it's been evolving. Um, we see these types of snacks showing up for consumers as a more convenient solution for hunger, of course. Um, but it's it's moved beyond just a satisfying hunger. Um, we know that consumers are looking to kind of drive balance between traditional snacks that they're accustomed to, but also uh, using salty snacks as a way to kind of explore uh, exciting and, and new flavors, um, try new formats they haven't previously experienced. It's just a there's a low barrier to buying a small little bag and trying something new as sort of a pick me up during the day. Which gets me to, um, you know, in addition to satisfying hunger, there's a lot of emotional um, needs that are fulfilled through snacking. I mean, as human beings, we're emotional creatures, right? And, and snacking is, is no ex exception to that. Um, a lot of those reasons for snacking, you and I can relate to. It could be mm -hmm. a reward for like something great happening. And you're, you kind of, you feel celebratory and you're like, you know, kind of adding to that moment and, and, and making it more fun with snacks. Um, oftentimes I know myself can be guilty of, um, you know, it's been a stressful day. I've been overwhelmed today and I just kind of need to sit back and be like, oh, and I want a snack to kind of get me through that moment and, and maybe get me back, you know, in the game a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. and lastly, uh, we can't discount the nature of cravings. Sometimes you just want something spicy, right? Or you want something different that you haven't had before. Um, and so salty snacks are, are really showing up in, in those ways. So beyond just hunger, it, it's a lot of the things that I've talked about that the role they're playing for, for consumers. Um, th there's more that I'd love to kind of highlight here, right? So snacking is, it's, it's no longer one size fits all. Um, consumers are looking to different snacks to deliver different experiences. Um, mm -hmm. Have you, when was the last time you've had a, a Rice crispy treat um, that, or even a Cheez-It? Um, a lot of these are very nostalgic uh, types of experiences that give you that sense of comfort, like it's a known commodity. And so, you know, that, that can drive enjoyment. But also we talked a little bit about the role of flavors and excitement. Snacks can be something that makes you feel like, you know, you have this craving and excitement for it. Um, and, and then lastly, I would say um, for, for a lot of snackers, the more rationally minded, functionally minded are looking for those kind of health benefits that are out there. Um, the idea of, of eating smaller meals through the day um, certainly has helped drive snacking. And so just okay. in summary here, Jenny, I'd love to highlight sort of five trends that, that we're focused on uh, with Kellogg and, and soon to be Kellanova. 
Um, so snacking is now, it's all the time. It's across any day part. Believe it or not, on cheese and Pringles, we see snacking at breakfast. Um, and so as routines shift, uh, consumers will continue to look to snacks to kind of fit into those that evolving lifestyle. So that, that's the first trend. That's that's here to stay. Secondly, I'll tell you that snacking um, is done an amazing job of unlocking sort of global flavor exploration. There's when you walk down the, the chip aisle, it's, it's not just barbecue and ranch and salt and vinegar. Um, you're, you're seeing like offerings from Kellogg's like Pringles, Elote, Mexican street corn, or you're seeing Los Calientes flavors, or you're seeing peppers from different parts of the world that, that you haven't heard of um, because spicy is also another big trend. So the third area I would highlight is grab and go convenience. So we talked about how lifestyles are, you know, not, there's not a lot of routine. People are just kind of going through their day and, and having different schedules. So um, this is not a new trend, but it's one that continues to just grow faster than the general category itself is that grab and go convenience. So wherever consumers are, you know, they're seeking out just convenient packaging, packaged snacks. Um, and so that's having the right product in the right packaging format and in the right channel to get whatever that that snacking need state is that or that job to be done that the consumer is hiring you to do. Um, we've hit a little bit on the fourth trend here, functional snacking. Um, uh, Kellogg owns a, a brand you might be familiar with, RX Bar. It's an amazing brand, um, very clear labeling, um, front of pack, right? Labeling right there just for you to see everything that's in that bar. Um, that's and, and that that business has, has just exploded. Um, additionally, Pringles this year, um, if you've been on our website, it has launched um, multigrain harvest blends crisps. And so these are just showing you how consumers are paying attention to ingredient lines. Salty snacks oftentimes aren't really thought about is is providing those functional you know elements of, of a snack, but there's opportunity there that um, you know that snacking companies are looking to, to grow it. And then lastly, for the fifth trend, um, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing a flip. Um, we're seeing savory snacking uh, be more on trend than, than sweet snacks are right now. Um, dessert flavors, of course, remain very popular, but all the top trending flavors in, in the category are, are more savory in nature. Um, a lot of that, frankly, is driven by millennials um, and just some of their preferences there. And there's such a large demographic. Um, and so we're seeing a big shift within that demographic towards savory snacks. But those yeah. are the five trends I'd love to kind of highlight and you'll probably hear me talk about today. That's awesome. Um, I don't know if you're a TikToker, but uh, one of my younger friends introduced me to the trend that's called girl dinner, which is basically snackification. You take um, whatever's laying around and cheese its um, maybe some Pringles uh grape a handful of grapes and it um one of my friends described it as like eating like a gremlin just like grabbing whatever is around you but it turns out when you combine Cheez-Its with Pringles and uh maybe an RX bar and some grapes that is a pretty nutritive filling meal so that is pretty <laughs> thank you millennials um yeah 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 it's, for that. It's, um... Agreed. I, I, I've seen this as well. And I'll tell you, my, my wife and I, we, we have three children and uh, we have a lot of girl dinners. Um, they're, they're, they're what you have on hand. And as you run from the soccer game to the, the cross country event, that's that's what you're going to eat. Um, and I agree with you. They, they, there's 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 satisfactions and cravings and sustenance all in one. Um, what I mean, we talked a little bit about uh, the evolution of Kellogg's snack brand portfolio, but um, some really notable things going on in the salty snack area uh, over at your employer. Uh, could you talk a little bit about how the company has grown and innovated uh, with brands uh, and new uh, items uh, to connect with those changing uh, millennials and other generational interests? <laughs> For sure. Um, I'm going to highlight three areas. I'm going to talk a little bit about packaging structure and, and channels. Mm -hmm. I'll talk a little bit about how we're evolving our, our product offerings themselves. And then the third um, isn't necessarily related to the products we sell, but it's how we reach consumers and, and be a part of their lives as, as, as is very different than it was you know, just five years ago. Um, so within packaging structure, um, you know, the way the way we package our products, uh, it, it needs to fit into consumers' lifestyles. And so as those have been evolving so quickly, 
um, it's really been a challenge for manufacturers and retailers to kind of keep up with those changes in behavior. Like, right? how do you adapt that center of store to have different, you know, pegs versus shelves versus whatever, you know, format you need to, to fit into that consumer lifestyle. So the biggest area of growth we've seen, again, are these convenient snack packs. Um, that that has seen multi-year, it's not new news, it's, it's multi-year double-digit growth, um, and it just continues to, to grow further. I, I think just the the um, the way COVID affected all of our schedules really just amplified this trend more. Um, and to address that trend, um, you're seeing a brand like Cheez-It really evolve its packaging format. So um, we now we have sort of like multi bags that we sell with, with like maybe a 24 count or a 30 count at, at our club customers. Um, you're seeing us more in like impulse front of store or there's tremendous growth in convenience store where we've evolved our packaging to be able to fit into those different channels. It's not one size fits all anymore. It's not just a 12 ounce box of cheese that we, 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 we probably have 15 different sizes of cheese it now. Um, so it's added a lot of complexity, but each each is meant to address, you know, the, the offer the right product and the right size and then the right channel to fit that consumer need. The second area I mentioned was was product offerings. Um, so Cheese It, uh, I'm sure you know, um, has has always been committed to 100% real cheese snacks. Um, it's really a foundational part of of Cheese It's equity. And so over the years, uh, you know, since 2015 and, and, and beyond, so the last you know seven and a half years, um, we've we've taken a lot of steps to really innovate and offer, diff, you know, help consumers uh, extend their enjoyment of 100% real cheese snacking mm -hmm. into different need states. And we've done that. And by need states, I mean it could be like end of day relaxed munching, like on the couch, you know, kind of mindless munching mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, and that's a different need state, or it could be side of plate lunch, like an accompaniment um, where our standard cheese it cracker in both those occasions, it's a little heavy. It, it has, it's, you know, you, you eat like 10 or 12 Cheez-Its and you're almost, you're kind of getting full. So by offering products like Snapped and Puffed and Grooves, which are all relatively new innovations, um, we, we've given consumers a, a way to enjoy that 100% real cheese equity, but in a more munchable format. In, in puffed, one serving of puffed is is nearly 40 puffs. Um, and so you can really prolong that enjoyment, that snacking occasion, and not not fill yourself up and, and you know, and, and ruin your dinner. Um, so that's one way we've been evolving our products. Um, the, the other is, uh, the third area that I'd love to highlight to me as a marketer, um, is super interesting. Um, and so as we look at, it, it's no surprise, um, Kelanova, uh, is always trying to, you know, bring, be relevant and, and grow with that next generation of, of consumers and, and recruit, you know, new, new consumers to, to know and love our brands in, in the way that we do. Um, and so as we look at Gen Z and, and younger millennials, um, you know, they're, they're the most multiculturally diverse generation our country has ever seen. Um, not only, you know, are, 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 with that multicultural diversity, also the way they, they consume media um, and the way they snack and eat, it, it's, it's very different. Um, and so as a result of that, as a marketer, um, we, we can't just make a one 15 second TV spot to, to, to drive, you know, relevance and reach with, with that audience. Um, and so we have to reach them differently. Uh, and, and one of the things that's really, to me, been fun is instead of so much focused on making a 15 second TV spot, we're more focused on how do we drive relevance in their lives. Uh, the challenge that we have as Kellogg with our snacking brands with younger generations is they know about us. They, they probably grew up as a younger child with Cheez-It in the house. It's, it's a household. Many households with kids have, have you know, have Cheez-Its. Um, but when they get to be 18, 20 year olds, they don't really see us as relevant in their life. And so we, we really connect with them over shared passion areas such as sports, gaming or music. And, and, and so you, you've probably heard of the cheese at bowl over the past, you know, three to four years or so we've, we've had a major college football bowl game. Um, it's received some of the best ratings of, of any of the, you know, the non, you know, January 1st bowl games. Um, and it's been really exciting to kind of see those type of activations come to life. Um, but more importantly, it's a way for those consumers to 
um, to, 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 to build a connection with our brands and see how they fit into their lives. And so in, in summary, right, it's, it's the three areas that we've really been innovating on is, is that how do we reach in the right packaging and the right channel? How do we continue to evolve our product offerings to make sure they're meeting the, the evolving needs of snacking needs of consumers? And then thirdly, how do we make sure we're still relevant uh, with, with, with the new generation that's so different um, than the generations that came before? It's different in a, in a great way. It is. It's really fun to watch um, what you've been doing with Cheez-Its. Um, let's talk about Pringles. Um, not not to um, reveal my age, but when, when I was a kid, there were um, regular Pringles in the red can, sour cream and cheddar and cheddar. Mm -hmm. And now, um, and they were in the tall cans. And now Pringles is just like going all over the place with fun flavors, uh, the Harvest br Blends. Um, could you talk a little bit about how um, the company's come up with some interesting innovations and on point with a number of those consumer trends that you've been talking about? For sure. But first, Jenny, I, I've got to I've got to bring up a controversial point with you. You said you really love Cheez-Its. The, the controversial point is where that S belongs on that. And if you go on TikTok and you look for this, it is Cheez-It crackers. But there's a significant debate about whether it should be Cheez-Its or Cheez-It crackers. But the official brand stance oh. is Cheez-It crackers. So okay. uh, I encourage you to look at some them. of the chatter. It's pretty funny, actually. I, I mean that in a funny way. No, that's cool. Uh, but it's that's actually cool. something that has been going on social media recently. Um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to talk about Pringles. Um, first, uh, Pringles has just been uh, on an amazing growth trajectory. Um, you, you might, you may know, uh, so Kellogg purchased Pringles in 2012. Mm -hmm. At the time, it was a, a $1.2 billion sales globally brand. Um, what we've seen just this year, uh, Pringles surpassed the $3 billion mark globally. It's now sold in 140 countries. Um, just last year, this brand that's, you know, 3 billion and in 140 countries grew at 17%. So just amazing growth. Uh, from a, a, a very large brand um, and really just shows that uh, a lot of the strategy and thinking and, and, and love of the brand um, is, is, is there. It's, it's, it's got a lot of momentum and, and just such a, an amazing brand to see out there. And I think one of the reasons strategically is, is what you're highlighting with, with flavors. Um, and so, you know, Pringles, uh, I, I want to say it's 10 years ago, maybe 15 uh, kind of came out with uh, a, a, a great marketing strategy. Like I kind of love, I'll always reference like marketing case studies, but the idea of like flavor stacking, right? Um, helped to ground flavor in this hyper-realistic flavor experience as part of the foundational equity of Pringles. Um, and the, the great thing about flavor stacking, right? Is, is it lets people, you know, first of all, you learn about different flavors. Uh, mm -hmm. Second of all, you learn how to kind of have fun with the product and engage with it, uh, and it brings enjoyment and satisfaction of, of the product. But from a business standpoint, you have to buy, you got to buy multiple flavors to stack. Yeah, so there's so many reasons why it was just a very smart marketing strategy that was that came out quite a while ago. Um, we, we've since moved on to other, maybe you've seen the can hands TV spot where a very known problem with Pringles, you put your hand in the can, mm -hmm. it gets stuck. Uh, and so, you know, the brand continues to, to, to you know, be a part and drive relevance with consumers. But um, so to your point, um, so we know that one of the trends we spoke about earlier was, you know, global flavor exploration. Um, Pringles, uh, you know, I'm sorry, consumers have really been craving new experiences and snacks. Um, and, and, you know, and, and salty snacks are, are kind of one easy way to bring that, to satisfy that urge for, for flavor exploration. You can buy a little bag, two or three bucks, and you get to try something new that you haven't had before. It's, it's not a lot of risk or investment. Um, and so the great thing about a brand like Pringles that, that built that foundation on flavor equity, it, it was a very natural fit for Pringles to, to take advantage of this trend, right? And bring forward flavors in markets that um, consumers are excited to try it, it, that to, to drive that that sort of curiosity or that craving they might have for something new and different. Um, and so, some examples of that uh, that we have coming out market right now are are elotes Mexican street corn potato chips. Um, they're they're delicious. They have just the right amount of like lime on them. Uh, one of my favorites. Um, and it, you know, recently we've had some great partnerships with 
I don't know if you've seen the TV show Hot Ones, where they try the different yes. hot sauces and it gets progressively hot, hotter. Uh-huh. And they ask them, the questions get more challenging as the hot sauce gets more challenging. It's kind of a fun show. Yeah. But we had a partnership with them where we launched some of their most popular sauces uh, into, we took that and adapted the flavor to, to be on top of a Pringle. And so that connected so well with the trends we're seeing in, in sort of spicy flavor exploration. So some of those products are like the, there's a, there's a sauce called the classic, which I think it's like number three or four as they kind of uh-huh. go up the list. Yeah. Um, we also launched uh, uh, Los Calientes Rojo and Los Calientes Verde. Um, and my favorite is the Verde. It's like that kind of green pepper um, mm-hmm. that you get cans of at the grocery store. It's, it's delicious. Um Interestingly, as, as as I talk about the passion areas and, and to drive relevance, you know, with those those younger consumers um, like Gen Z and, and Zennials, um, Minecraft is a game that just has is a huge, massive following. Um, and there's a there's a there's a food in Minecraft called Suspicious Stew. Yes, yeah. part of the game. And maybe you've seen the Pringles. So Pringles I recently have, yeah. launched a flavor that allows consumers to experience what Suspicious Stew would taste like. Um, you know, if it launched and that was done in, in partnership with Minecraft and it's just a fun way, you know, there was no way to experience that other than, you know, for Pringles to kind of bring it forward. It makes it fun. It drives relevance with a, a shared passion area with our consumers. Um, lastly, I'll talk about with, with Pringles specifically, um, is, uh, in the area of functional snacking. Um, and so we talked a little bit about how consumers like RX bar are just looking for snacks to do more than just satisfy a craving. It's, it's, you know, I'm putting something in my body. How can you make me feel good about that? What else can you offer me besides just something that that tastes good um, right away? And so Pringles uh, is, is jumping into that trend. Um, and so we recently launched our Harvest Blends products. Uh, mm-hmm. We have four flavors online. I'll tell you uh, a lot of retail excitement behind these. Uh, I think a lot of just you know bringing a new weight, I think it's a very innovative approach to, to salty snacking space. Um, but it's a new crisp. It's made from a blend of of, of multigrain, black bean, and 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 toasted sweet grains, and it's um, a, just a, got a really unique flavor and crunch profile. And um, you know, a lot of people are very excited about it. So we'll we'll have to keep our eyes on that to to see how that performs. Um, I'll just and then I'll end with Pringles. That you know, Pringles is going to continue to to tap into those those key snacking occasions that we see from areas in gaming and sports and music and you know by aligning ourselves Pringles with with these events um you know we're, we're hoping to build a, a connection with consumers you know a typical marketing 101 that win the hearts and minds of consumers and become their kind of go-to snack for for getting together or or on the go type of occasions I'm curious um how does the Kellogg snack team work to ensure that your finger is sort of on the pulse of what snacking consumers are hungry for and that you continue delivering on what they're looking for um what are some of the you've hinted at you know the millennials um at Gen Z what are some of the other demographic shifts you're you'd like to highlight as especially worth keeping an eye on going forward yeah, I mean, I think you've hit the biggest, uh, you know, area within your question around the, the the generational differences and how they approach snacking. Um, and you know, I, I don't know that we're doing anything different than what we've 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 done that have helped to build these brands over the years, right? It's it, it comes from a, a deep understanding of our consumers, uh, their their changing needs, their their cultures, uh, their lifestyles and, and passions. Um, you know, this way we can always ensure we're we're making offerings that that fit in with their with what they want. Um, that we're offering the right products and the right formats and in the right channels. And channels is no longer just like the convenience store or club, but it's also are we reaching them in the world of like Omni uh, for like digital presence? Um, are we are we reaching them with out of home experiences? Um, partnerships are you know like like the cheese at bowl or on an airline or places where you know, they're looking for a snack. Are are, are we there and, and being relevant to them to meet their snacking needs? And so, you know, each each generation certainly has a role to play and they're all kind of nuanced and, and, and different. Um, and so Gen Z and, and younger millennials, we, we talked about how they're, they're the most multicultural, diverse generations countries ever seen. 
they 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 grew up during COVID. Um, they've had to learn, like from a native standpoint, on how to be flexible and adapt and and overcome challenges on their own. Um, additionally, they're they're digitally native, right? They they, they grew up with a, a mobile phone in their hands. Um, you know, like we 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 got to see it get you know go through the changes to smartphones, but to them that's just always been there. Um, and so their, their, their brain, the way they think is, is different than other generations. Um, they also, uh, admirably, um, are, they make, they make choices that reflect their beliefs and needs, right? Um, they choose brands that are authentic and, and so we have to operate differently if we want them to choose our brands and be a part of their lives. Um, you know, and so we know that this generation really, uh, loves exploration, um, and we know that flavors are, are one way to help drive exploration for them. Uh, and so by, you know, when we talk about the right products, right, you know, we, we see spicy, we see global flavors. Um, we see that that exploration, you know, um, behavior really present uh, with Gen Z's and also just making sure we're relevant to them out in the market. Um, I'll just hit on uh, millennials and, and Gen X real quickly. Millennials. Um, you know, th though some of the sweet snacks peaked during COVID with millennials, um, the future uh, is really expected to be in that the world of savory snacks. And we're seeing that pivot into savory snack growth, um, particularly, you know, a lot of household millennial households are, are really becoming households with kids. Uh, and so they're the snacks now are, are a lot of times family shared snacks. And that's where you're seeing like pop tarts and rice crispy treats, like really and Pringles really like resonate with millennials um, because they're fitting in with their with their lifestyle and the needs they have now um, as they are packing up a car or maybe mom's carrying a bag with a bunch of snacks and, and other toys in it. And then lastly, I'll talk about Gen X. So Gen X is near to my own heart. <laughs> um, Same. So, you know, we're, we're, we always like to think of ourselves as the overlooked generation, right? Um, and it's it's true. But, um, you know, one thing that's interesting is the, the, the generation that's showing the most growth in, in snacking purchases is actually Gen X. Um, and, and so I think it's just uh, as, as we were adopting also to as lifestyles are changing and, and schedules are changing, we're, we're seeing those trends out there and we're, we're, we're adapting them. Um, and so that's why I think you're seeing a lot of growth as we kind of move away from the traditional three meals a day and, and start to uh, have think about meal replacement or you call it girls dinner. Um, we're seeing snacking occasions grow the most with 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 our generation. Um, and it's 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 the brands that we grew up with. It's pop tarts, cheese it, but now we're also adapting brands like RX Bar. Um, and so just a summary, I think it's it's the way Kellogg has has always grown. I don't see that changing as we become Kellanova. It's just a, a deep, deep understanding of, of our consumers and you know, how we can be of service to them and their snacking needs. Um, well, before I let you go, because I know you've got a lot of snack stuff to do today. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about your own personal snacking behaviors. What are some of your favorite go-to treats, either those made by your company or other producers? What do you Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I'm a dad. Uh, I've got yeah. three kids. Um, and so, uh, often my, my, you know, my snacks come from whatever is in the pantry. Um, and, 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 uh, I'm probably the last one that gets to put their, their, their mark on the grocery list. Uh, and so I'll, I'll go through the pantry, but I, um, I'll tell you, I have, uh, I, I, I also am a big fan of, of spicy snacks. Um, I really have enjoyed the hot ones partnership with Pringles. Um, we, I've always eat, I had a lot of cheese. It cheese. It had a couple of launches that mm -hmm. were called scorch and hot that I, I oh, really, yeah. I really like those. There was a snack product that was great. So I tend to stay with kind of hot sort of salty snacks. Um, I'm maybe not the healthiest snacker, but I also will just eat, you know, whatever my kids have in the pantry at the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. I am. Um, I am the same. I do not have kids, but what I do have is, uh, exhaustion. <laughs> so, um, I will, instead of making myself a healthful lunch, I'll end up, uh, kind of like accidentally getting healthful with a handful of Cheez-Its and then like, uh, I've got a thing of deli meat. And so it's basically, it's basically a sandwich. You know, I, deconstructed I, agree. Sandwich. I agree. Everything in moderation, right? Like, um, I think just in, enjoy yourselves. Uh, don't 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 withhold too much of you know the joy you can have from enjoying a good snack. Um, just you know make sure it's in, in moderation and, and taking care of yourself. 
Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens as Kellogg and Kellanova uh, move forward. Um, and I'm sure you'll keep me posted as to the, the fun stuff that you've got coming up. So uh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Jen. I appreciate the conversation. I am I am very excited to see where, where Kellanova goes. I think it's, it's going to be an exciting ride to be on and, and look forward to talking with you again about it. Yeah, well, I will let you go. Uh, thank you for your time. And everybody in the audience, thank you for watching. Have a good one.